How's everybody doing? Pretty good. Mediocre. Yeah, mediocre. Uh, uh, there we go. Any highs and lows? Spring break is starts Saturday, oh. so. <laughs> oh, you've inverted yourself. <laughs> what the heck? You're having fun with the, with the filters? I've been playing with the settings, yeah. <laughs> Did you have a low? Um, tomorrow at school, it's going to take longer than the seven hours it normally takes to get through the day. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a long one because, you know, that you can't get to break without it taking forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd say my low is probably that I have a big math test tomorrow. So I can't, I, I feel like I can't relax until then. And then when spring break starts, I'll be like, so like stressed out waiting to hear what grade I get. So I feel like it'll slow me down a little bit. Um, but the high is that I studied all day. And also we had a great weather today. I know it rained a little bit, but I love the rain. And also mm -hmm. I've been getting to play golf a lot this last oh, week. Nice. So it's definitely been a high. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my highs and lows are in school this week. Well, hi, actually, it, uh, we went, we had a weekend. Uh, so we went to a bed and breakfast in Grand Rapids, Ohio, um, right there on the river on the mommy and uh, got to walk up and down along the mommy, had a, a really nice meal, a couple of really nice meals, um, just had a really good time. Um, yeah. But then this week was just brutal in school. I don't know, it, just the way it fell, the amount of work this week was twice in each class, anything that I've encountered before. So mm -hmm. it was, it was pretty rough. I, I'm caught up, but you know, I'm still looking at a lot of work that's due by the end of the week. Um, so yeah, so I, I kind of looked at my summer schedule. I was originally going to do two courses each term and I said, yeah, not through the summer. So I, I cut it back to two, but even so I'll be halfway through at the end of the semester, I'll be halfway through my master's. So, and I'm kind of glad I took the extra courses this semester. So my highs and lows are kind of connected. Um, we are doing our spring break this week and Nisa went to spend time with her grandma um, and I am painting her room and which I actually super enjoy. So mm -hmm. that's, that's very fun. Um, but I need like two or three more days for her to be gone to get it all completely finished. Um, Cause I'm painting like all of her furniture and everything too. So well, Sammy's helping me, but with that part um, and uh, yeah, so really no major lows at all just good yep. all right all right so last week we talked about the parable of the vineyard um yeah so tell me something about the parable of the vineyard uh they kept killing the the son yep. yeah and the, they repeatedly across the stories yeah just that son couldn't escape it. He, he took it on the chin, kind of like fate. Yeah, Groundhog's Day in a parable. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and then they, they varied a little bit about what happened to the servants. But yep, they, uh, the people decided they wanted the vineyard uh, for themselves. Um, keywords for this week. Uh, we've actually had covenant before. A relationship of trust and love between God and humanity. Of course, a covenant can also between, be between uh, men as well, but in this case, we are thinking of, uh, of God's covenant with, men, with uh, humanity. Um, Passover, a Jewish holy day and meal celebrating how God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. And I didn't look this over in detail because I've been so busy, honey. Do we go into a, the Passover a little bit in the lesson? I believe so. Okay. All right. That but I might be, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we do. Okay. All right. Because I was going to ask you what you knew about uh, the Passover, but we'll wait and see if Well, they... I mean, you could still ask that question. Okay. All right. So what, what do you guys know about Passover? I know it's a Jewish holy day and meal celebrating how God rescued the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Okay. Do you know specifically, so they rescued, God rescued them. Um, you know, there were 10 plagues. 
you know, remember what the last plague was? Was it the one with locusts? No, no. Um, so the, the very final plague, and if, if you want to use the term, the straw that broke the Pharaoh's back, um, was uh, that um, God decreed that the firstborn of all Egypt uh, would die. Oh, yeah. um, and so the Bible tells us that he sent an angel of death. Don't really know specifically what that is. The, the words actually mean just a messenger of death. Um, so he sent an angel of death uh, into Egypt um, and uh, told the Israelites to sacrifice a lamb uh, and then paint their doorposts uh, and the, the post across the top of the door uh, with the blood of the sacrificed lamb. Um, and in that way, the angel of death, the messenger of death, passed over the Israelites' homes and the Israelite firstborn were not killed. Um, but all of the firstborn, including Pharaoh's own firstborn son, uh, died. Uh, and that is, uh, they, that is what, they're, what they celebrate um, in the Passover meal. Uh, and at that point, Pharaoh uh, and the people basically said, get out. And we've had enough, get out. Um, so uh, this was actually the Jewish holiday that they were celebrating with what we call the Last Supper. Um, this was the last meal that Jesus ate with his disciples where he reminded him them that the bread was his body and the wine uh, was his blood. Um, uh, sacrifice is the gift of an animal, grain, or produce offered to God. Um, I would extend that a sacrifice. You can sacrifice anything to God. Um, you know, a lot of times we think about tithes and offerings. You know, that is, that is you, you can hear the term sacrificial giving. Um, but when you give of what you have, to God, that is sacrifice. Um, you can sacrifice your time um, and, uh, and serve others. So, and then forgiveness, what allows us to be pardoned, absolved, and set free from our sins. So and that is uh, God forgiving us of our sins. All right. Uh, God of grace, thank you for forgiving us when we mess up. We know we don't deserve to be forgiven. And we're grateful that you always are there to offer your assurance of mercy. Help us forgive the people in our lives who have caused us hurt, pain, and frustration. Give us courage to forgive these people, not only with our words, but also with our hearts. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Reese? In the evening, Jesus was at the table with the 12 followers. They were all eating. Then Jesus said, Believe me when I say that one of you 12 here will hand me over to my enemies. The followers were very sad to hear this. Each one said, Lord, surely I am not the one. Jesus answered, One who has dipped his bread in the same bowl with me will, will be the one to hand me over. The Son of Man will suffer that the scripture, what the scriptures say will happen to him, but it will be very bad for the one who hands over the Son of Man to be killed. It would be better for him if he had never been born. Then Judas, the very one who would hand him over, said to Jesus, Teacher, surely I am not the one you are talking about, am I? Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. Are you driving? driving? Okay, yeah. go ahead, Reese. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it. He broke off some pieces, gave them to his followers, and said, Take this bread and eat it. It is my body. Then he took the cup of wine, thanked God for it, and gave it to them. He said, Each one of you drink some of it. This wine is my blood, which will be poured out to forgive the sins of many and begin the new agreement from God to his people. I want you to know I will not drink this wine again until the day when we are together in my father's kingdom and the wine is new. Then I will drink it again with you. How do you think the disciples felt when Jesus said one of them would betray him? 
I would think that they felt surprised considering how tight of a knitly group or how knitly tight how, the group is. How tightly knit the group was. Mm-hmm. And I mean, considering that, you know, he chose them and then they accepted him sort of in a way when they were originally, when they became the disciples. I mean, I think that all of them were probably thinking, which one of us will it be if he, if he thinks it's one of them will. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, except for, of course, for the one who knew. Yeah. Uh, if you were one of the disciples, how would you have felt? Um, I would have definitely been like thinking about like, man, would I really actually like betray him? Like if it's like, could it be me? Like, cause you don't really know. Yeah. Would you try to stop the betrayer, ignore what Jesus had said, or would you just go with the flow? I'm definitely following Jesus's lead on this one because he probably knows better than I do what's going on. So, I mean, I not necessarily go with the flow, but I mean, if Jesus tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. And if he just says to do nothing, then I'm just going to do nothing. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Reese. I don't remember where we stopped. The time came for them to eat the Passover meal. Jesus and the apostles were together at the table. Jesus said to them, I wanted very much to eat uh, I wanted very much to eat this Passover meal with you before I die. I will never eat another Passover meal until it is given its full meaning in God's kingdom. Then Jesus took a cup of wine. He gave thanks to God for it and said, "Take this cup and give it to everyone here." I will never drink wine again until God's kingdom comes. Then he took some bread and thanked God for it. He broke off some pieces, gave them to the apostles and said, this bread is my body that I'm giving for you. Eat this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and said, this wine represents the new agreement from God to his people. It will begin when my blood is poured out for you. Jesus said, but here on this table is the hand of the one who will hand me over to my enemies. The son of man will do what God has planned, but it will be very bad for the, ones who, for the one who hands over the son of man to be killed. Then the apostles asked each other, which one of us would do that? Can you remember context? Later, the apostles began to argue about which one of them was the most important. But Jesus said to them, the kings of the world rule over their people, and those who have authority over others want to be called the great providers for the people. But you must not be like that. The one with the most authority among you should act as if he is the least important. The one who leads should be like the one who serves. Who is more important, the one serving or the one sitting at the table being served? Everyone thinks it's the one being served, right? But I have been with you as the one who serves. You men have stayed with me through many struggles. So I give you authority to rule with me in the kingdom the Father has given me. You will eat and drink at my table in that kingdom. You will sit on thrones and judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Satan has asked to test you men like a farmer's test, like a farmer tests his wheat. Oh, Simon, Simon, I have prayed that you will not lose your faith. Help your brothers be stronger when you come back to me. But Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go to jail with you. I will even die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will say you don't know me. You will say this three times. Then Jesus said to the apostles, remember when I sent you out without um, without money, a bag or sandals? Did you need anything? The apostles said, no. Jesus said to them, but now if you have money or a bag, carry that with you. If you don't have a sword, sell your coat and buy one. The scriptures say he was considered a criminal. This scripture must happen. It was written about me and it is happening now. The followers said, look, Lord, here are two swords. Jesus said to them, that is enough. How are these passages the same and how are they different? We kind of buzzed through them. 
Yeah, they're similar in the fact that it's the Passover, the Last Supper, and um, Jesus says that one of them is going to. I don't think the other the other one didn't mention Simon Peter and how he said mm-hmm. that he was going to betray him. But I mean, so there's that one. And Jesus said that they had to follow the scripture because it said in scripture that he's a criminal. So he told the apostles that they were going to have to exchange their coats for swords. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think, uh, and then I think the John passage um, refers more to love and because that's the whole focus of John is God's love uh, and brings in uh, more about the covenant as well. Oh, here we go. Mark. Do you want to read this one? Yep. Good. It was now the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the day the lambs were killed for the Passover. Jesus' followers came to him and said, We will go and prepare everything for you to eat the Passover meal. Where do you want us to have the meal? You know, just um, so it's fresh in our mind, I'm going to kind of stop us here. Uh, So so what do you notice um, about this passage, right? This part of the passage in comparison to the others. It talks about the festival of unleavened bread. Right. And so he actually makes a little bit of an explanation right? So Mark was written for Romans. Uh, So Mark takes a second to kind of make a little explanation about the festival of unleavened bread, um, instead of just saying it was the Passover, uh, and then that it was specifically the day the lambs were killed for the Passover. Corinne? Jesus sent two of his followers into the city. He said to them, go into the city, You will see a man carrying a jar of water. He will come to you. Follow him. He will go into a house. Tell the owner of the house. The teacher asks that you show us the room where he and his followers can eat the Passover meal. The owner will show you a large room upstairs and is that is ready for us. Prepare the meal for us there. Okay. Any thoughts on this passage? Different, the same than the others? It mentioned, ever... yeah, it mentions that the he's choosing a house. Yeah, yeah, a lot more action detail here. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, so Mark, who wrote this, um, was actually was Barnabas's uh, cousin. Uh, was probably in the area of Jerusalem at the time, uh, so probably had additional details. Um, so we know, uh, we know. He refers to the owner of the house, uh, kind of describes how the place for the Passover um, uh, was chosen. Uh, So the followers left and went into the city. Everything happened the way Jesus said. So the followers prepared the Passover meal. Uh, So Jewish custom dictated that anyone in Jerusalem who had a room available would give it up upon request. Uh, to a pilgrim who was in Jerusalem to celebrate. So it it wouldn't be unusual at all um, for uh, Jesus, who came in with his disciples, uh, to make this request. Would you feel if a stranger came to your house asking to use a spare room and to celebrate a feast? Would you welcome the stranger or turn this person away? Uh, So uh, in the Middle East, you know, here in the United States, if somebody just knocked on your door and said, hey, um, you know what, can I use one of your rooms to uh, fix up dinner for me and my friends tonight? Yeah. I would probably cite the Third Amendment, even though it's not applicable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'd probably, we'd probably be, yeah, I don't think so. Um, why don't you get off my porch before I call the police? Um, uh, but uh, hospitality in, in the Middle East was a little different back then and, and is today. Uh, hospitality is a key Middle Eastern value. Um, uh, particularly in the uh, in 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 the Arabic world and the Jewish world, uh, and so those traditions had carried through, uh, where being hospitable uh, to strangers um, not only is commanded in the Old Testament, uh, but was a major tradition. Uh, these three passages all relate to Jesus becoming the Passover Lamb. During the first Passover, a roasted lamb was eaten by the people before they fled Egypt. The blood that was drained was used to mark their doorways, which kept them safe from the plague of death, which is what we already uh, we already talked about. Uh, 
Jesus tells his disciples to drink from the cup and calls the wine the blood of the covenant. He explains to his followers that his blood is the new covenant that promises people salvation through Jesus' death and resurrection. Um, John 3.16. Go ahead, Reese. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And Corinne, Ephesians. For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Uh, these two verses tell us something about God. They tell us that God loves us deeply. In Ephesians, we learn that we are saved by grace through faith and that it is the gift from God. In John, we learn that God sent Jesus to die for our sins, all because God loves us. The quiz show, the quiz show. Hey! hey. <laughs> a covenant is a oh. promise, a requirement. A yeah, both A and C. A and C. Woo! Boom. I mean, if it's established by God, it kind of is a requirement, too. Yeah, yeah this is true. <laughs> the Israelites left Egypt because they were bored. They had amnesia and didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> God had caused Pharaoh to free them. The internet speed in Egypt was too slow, adding my own. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go with D, none of the above. No, C? C, cool. yeah, there we go. We oh. talked a little bit about the last plague, so there were actually 10 okay. plagues. Um, oh. You know, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. God, thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Oh. Um, and they went through, and I don't remember what, you know, now I'm blanking. Well, I know there was the water to blood. Uh, there was uh, the flies, the frogs, the locust. So a lot of bad stuff happened. And um, finally, uh, Pharaoh lets them go, uh, changes his mind, sends his army. Uh, God splits the Red Sea, and then uh, the water washes over Pharaoh's army. Uh, yep. What do you think? Body. Any ideas? Holy Communion is one of the blank sacraments in the Lutheran Church. Seven. Yeah, seven. I said seven first, so you're copying me. Nope, they only have two. Two. Uh, yeah, so I think the, the Catholics have seven sacraments. Yeah. Seven um, minus five is two, so basically yeah. we got right. So in, in the Lutheran Church, it is uh, communion and baptism are the two sacraments. In the words of institution, Jesus said, I'm hungry, let's eat. <laughs> Do this for the remembrance of me, and that's actually another Lutheranism, the words of institution. Uh, do this for the remembrance of me. Is that lamb cooked yet? Did you wash your hands? He was thinking he predicted the COVID. Did you wash your hands? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Where's your moment. mask? Yeah. <laughs> the we're going with B. B, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the words of institution is just uh, the Lutheran way of saying this is when he instituted the sacrament of communion. We are promised blank every time we partake of communion. Forgiveness of sin, life, salvation, or all of the above. All of the above. Yeah, we didn't even need to read the other ones. One of these times, they're going to trick us. I, I predict like the last lesson. It's going to have an all of the above, and that won't be the answer. In Passover story in Exodus 12, blank was spread on the doorposts. Peanut, Peanut butter, butter <laughs> applesauce, grape juice, or blood. If C was wine, it would be closer to the actual answer, but we're going to go with blood. Uh, blood. I don't know. Applesauce is really calling, calling my name. Yeah, there you I don't go. Even, did they have Applesauce. peanut butter back then? Yeah, did that even exist? Uh, no, no. <laughs> peanut butter was actually an American uh, invention. But at any rate, it was blood on the doorposts 
um, uh, for Passover. Jesus shared his last meal with the Pharisees, the chief priests, the disciples, or the entire city of Jerusalem. This, this they had to run out a rec center to get the entire city of Jerusalem in there. Yeah. Well, and with COVID restrictions, that wouldn't even work. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. This one's a fast break layup. We're going to go see disciples. Disciples. Another name for Holy Communion. So the sacrament of the altar, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, or all of the above. Uh, I mean, I see all of the above. Yeah. And, you know, knowing me, I don't want to pick it, but I'm going to I'm going to pick, pick it. it. Like, yeah, geez. yeah, those are. I was I look, I just looked at the Eucharist because that's common to me. So but yeah, these are actually all terms that can be used to reference um, Holy Communion. Um, what are the words we hear every time we take Holy Communion? Jesus said, this is my body given for you and this is my blood shed for you. Wow, what a gift that is for us. Explore the world of blood to learn more about what it is and how it works. So we're going to do a little biblical biology. Da -da -da -da. That, needs a, that needs a theme song. Uh, blood keeps us alive by carrying oxygen and nutrients to all the cells in our body. It also transports waste out of our cells and is one of the first lines of defense against infections and other diseases. Each of us has one of eight blood types, A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, O positive, or O negative. These blood types are determined by the presence of specific protein structures on the surface of red blood cells. During a transfusion, it is important to receive blood that is your exact type to avoid a dangerous reaction that could be fatal. However, there is one blood type that can be given to anyone, O negative. O negative blood is always available in hospital blood banks to give in emergency situation, situations when there isn't time to determine the blood type of a patient. O negative blood saves many, many lives each year. Do you know your blood type? I believe I'm AB positive. There you go. Yeah, I have no idea. Too many letters. I'm O. Do you remember, honey? We should know. I'm A positive. A positive. Yeah, and so um, Miss Alana, when she had leukemia, um, was literally kept alive with blood transfusions uh, yeah. for several months. Um, as treatment for the leukemia, they actually killed her bone marrow, uh, which yeah. produces blood. And so, uh, yeah. It was, uh, we are very thankful for people who give blood. Absolutely. Um, and so do you know anyone who has received a transfusion? Uh, you do, in fact, know. Um, you know is there I, anyone other than me? <laughs> yeah, other than Miss Alana. Uh, I, and I she, think it's she probably was, a good thing that we don't. Yeah. Yep. I think we're lucky. Well, you know, we know <laughs> just Miss Alana. That's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, how would you feel if you received life-giving blood? Pretty grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she actually received um, blood, platelets, and bone marrow. So she, she's had it all. How is Jesus's blood given in communion life giving? It's showing that you're willing to repent for your sins and to start on start anew, sort of. That's right, yeah. Redeemer God, we thank you for the story of the Passover lamb whose blood was shed so the children of Israel might be set free from their bondage in Egypt. Thank you for the covenant you made with your children all those years ago. Jesus became the Passover lamb and willingly shed his blood so we might be set free from our bondage to sin. As we learn about the Lord's Supper and celebrate the meal together, may we be great, forever grateful for what you have done for us. In your name we pray. And we all amen. say, amen. All right, so a couple of housekeeping uh, things. We will not meet next week. 
Uh, Monday, the church Thursday. will be having their Monday, serv- Monday Thursday service, so we encourage everyone uh, to attend that. Um, mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, Sunday morning is Palm Sunday, so same yep. thing. Um, encourage you to uh, to attend Palm Sunday and Easter service, as they are both. Uh, well, and this year, they're also doing Good Friday service also. Oh, that's they're right. Good Friday service. Yeah. yeah, they're doing a Good Friday service. I think it's at seven. Yeah. Okay. On yeah, on Friday. Um, if you're there, I will probably be there. I'm planning to be there for the Palm Sunday service. So, see you then. Until we meet again. Till we meet again. <laughs>